Um, so anyway, I'm just going to mix this up so it's nice and mixed together. Lovely anemone, can anyone see my words? Yeah, I like Onyx a lot. The, the only thing about Onyx is it cures so fast and so hot. I've had issues with some of my molds um, bubbling. And so I don't use it all the time. I actually prefer 300 more. I've gotten better pours out of 300. I could probably do Onyx with this too, but I have more 300 on hand. So, and I need my Onyx for uh, swords and daggers. So. Which later day I have to make, uh, I have to pour a, a Sif sword and a pair of Tariel daggers too. So, um, let's see. Okay, so, so I'm gonna pour this. I'm very high tech. I just use Dixie cups. <laughs> now, I mentioned earlier that I lost my cheat sheet that I had written down the amount of. Uh, the amount of each product to use. So, probably gonna waste a lot of resin today, um, just eyeballing it, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball this. Maybe just a little more. It's probably gonna be too much. Better to have too much than too little. And I gotta go grab a new thing of paper towels. I like to wipe this uh, part A off so it doesn't dry in the dry in the threads of the cap. Yeah, they do. Um, they do. Smooth on does make a slow version of Black Onyx, and I also have that on hand. Um, that's actually what I use for the Sif Swords, because the fast just dries too fast and it would bubble so much that um, that I couldn't get a good pour out of it. So. So all I'm doing is uh, pouring the two parts, part A, part B, and the same amount in each cup. Um, Smoothcast is really great that way. It's one to one, so there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of guessing there. And then um, yeah, so uh, just dump A into B. Kind of scrape it a bit. And then mix the two together. About, I think they actually say like 90 seconds, but I mean, I do it for about 30, I think. Hey Bjorn, nice to have you back. I can't even see how many people do we have in here right now. Uh, 11 people cool hey thanks for joining me on a Saturday people so you know my day job I work shift schedules I work 12 hour days three days on three days off it's rotating so that's why I can't I can't ever set up a this is the day of every week that I will uh, be live streaming because I don't have a set schedule which makes it hard for doing fun things so I appreciate you guys being here. All right, you know, and always scrape the sides and scrape the bottom while you're mixing this. I can already start to feel this heat up. So anyway, it's ready to go. 
And then because of the powder in there, you can't just like dump it. You have to kind of go, I always go kind of slow into a corner and let it fan out from there because you don't want it to run the, um, run the powder off. Let's see, am I, did I do enough? Hey, look at that. Well, B. That was pretty right on. <laughs> I hope you all are very impressed by that. <laughs> Here's the funny thing. I've never done that before. And here it is on camera. It's it's perfectly level. I won't even have to... Uh, usually they, they go over a little bit and I have to sand off the back. <laughs> but um, yeah, look at that. Woohoo! That makes me laugh. So there you go, that's a pour. So one of the cool things about having the black in there, um, as this sets and cures, you will um, you'll get to see it you'll get to see it change. Because it won't it, it looks really dark black right now, but it'll be like a light gray. Um, and you can see some of the onyx with its bubbling at top because it heats up and stuff, so but it's kind of fun to watch. Can you see it changing color? And while we're waiting for that, so here's an example of um, one of the Furiosa buckles. So this one, this is cold cast and it's before, make sure you guys can still see that. It's before I cleaned it up. So see on the back here, it kind of over pours just a little bit. So I take that on my belt sander and I just run that across it to clean all that up. And then of course it needs to be polished with, um, with steel wool. Steel wool polishes up the cold cast really well. So that's why it has like a dull finish right now. You see that? It's kind of dull. But once it's cleaned up, it'll look great. And that'll look the same way when I pull it out of there. It only takes about, I don't know, 10 minutes for a smooth cast to 300 to cure. So I'll be able to pull that out soon. And it's thick and the thicker the, the thicker the piece, the quicker it'll cure too. So. And hey, I'll tell you what, this piece right here, um, if anyone's interested, for everybody that's in the chat right now, I'm gonna give this one away too. Just to thank you guys for showing up. So, here's how you're gonna do that. Email me, mail, M-A-I-L, at coregeek.net, and just say you wanna enter. And then I'll just do a random pick from all those entries um, for this piece too, if, if you guys are interested in getting your hands on this piece. Like I said, it still needs to be cleaned up, so that's not why it's shiny yet. But I'll clean it all up, it'll be ready to go for you. So, all finished and ready to go. So anyway, uh, yeah, in fact, yeah, uh, I'll just give you my email again. So mail, M-A-I-L, at coregeek.net. And then I'll just choose from there. Hey, TNT Cosplay, thanks for showing up. That's really cool. Uh, Blizzard God wants to know if the Onyx causes the 300 to cure faster. Um, I'm assuming it does. I've never tested it. I'm, I'm guessing it will a little bit because it's a faster curing resin. Uh, Smoothcast 300 is already a pretty fast cure anyway. So, um, yeah. So if you missed it, TNT, I just said that this, this uh, Furiosa buckle here, I'm going to give this one away for everybody as a as an extra drawing an extra bonus just to say thanks for everybody for showing up for my live stream today on a saturday and uh just being cool people and following my work so i do these giveaways because i just i like i like sharing with the community um i want people to see my work and i want people to share their work and uh, it's just a way to say thanks because i appreciate people spending their time with me um we all have 
a limited amount of time, you know, the one precious resource that none of us can change. And, you know, having people show up and appreciate my work is, it means a lot to me. So, um, so anyway, this one I'm going to give away. You can enter by just sending me an email, mail, M-A-I-L, at coregeek.net. All right, this one, it's still pretty hot. <laughs> Tentacle Creations, thank you for the follow. Actually, I'm just going to quickly add a command for that. Um, let's see. Email. All right, so now if you type in um, exclamation mail, which I'm going to do right now. Oh, sorry, exclamation email. Duh. Such a dork. There you go. There's a link to my mail. Oh, and yeah, you can just put like giveaway in the subject matter or the subject. Uh. So cool. I see uh, I already got three people entered. Awesome. So yeah. Um, so as a thank, uh, just one more time, as a thank you for everybody showing up, I'm going to give away this Furiosa buckle. Um, I'll clean it up and polish it. And uh, just a way to say thanks for showing up for the live stream today. So if you type an exclamation email, That'll give you my email address. And cool. And I'll do a quick drawing for that soon. So we're just kind of killing time a little bit here for this one to. It's still pretty warm, so it's probably cured enough to pull out. But I want it to uh I want it to be cooler. So yeah, waiting for resin to cure. It's almost as fun as waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> so, um, let's see. I'm looking at the chat and TNT cosplay, by the way, guys. TNT cosplay, best foam around. Um, I have TNT foam right here. Look at that! Yay! Which reminds me, I need to order some more. This is my last, my last bit from uh, the last projects I worked on. Anyway, great foam, no voids, um, decent price. Doesn't cost you an arm and a leg best thing about it is is it's, it's got a good a good consistency it sands really well and there's no evil texture on the back side so that that alone makes it worth it 14 viewers wow hey I'm <laughs> I'm always amazed when like more than like two people show up so thank you guys so much for being here um, yeah, so TNT, uh, get their foam. I haven't built, done a foam project in a while. I've been doing more casting and molding and stuff, but I'll probably be transitioning back to foam soon. Uh, I have to help my daughter. She wants to build a foam armor. Um, trying to think of the name of the character from Steven Universe, I think. 
Megaton. Megaton. Is there a Megaton in Steven Universe? I don't know. I'm a total noob when it comes to Steven Universe. So, or Metaton maybe? Anyway, I guess he has some armor. Something. So we're going to be working on that soon. And we'll probably li I'll probably live stream some of that too. Um, and then my next commission, I am supposed to be building another sword uh, from Fire Emblem. This one would be Roy's sword. I don't know if it has a fancy name or not. Uh, but it's for the same client that commissioned the Yato sword. So, so yeah. And if you haven't seen the Yato sword, um, I set up a link for that too. Let me see here. Yato. Okay. Yeah, Bjorn. Okay. So I'm a total idiot. Yeah. It is uh, Undertale. Yeah, Metaton is from Undertale. That's right. I, they're big fan. My daughters are big fans right now of Undertale and Steven Universe, and I get the two confused because um, I'm a dork like that. So, uh, Kaylin Silverfur, thank you. I'm glad you like the uh, enthusiastically like the Yato Sword. I I'm really happy with how that turned out. Uh, it was. It was not the easiest build I've ever done, but it also was challenging, but it wasn't, it, I, it, it, there wasn't really ever a point where I just wanted to give up. Um, that's one of the first times that's ever happened to me. Almost everything I've ever built, um, I get to a certain point where I just want to give up and be done with it. Uh, but that one, it continued to go well. I had a few minor setbacks um, because prop building, prototyping stuff, is just as much um, troubleshooting, probably more troubleshooting than building, and engineering things and making things work right. Uh, that sword had some challenges, not just because I sculpted it. I did the most sculpting ever I've ever done before on that piece, um, but the engineering of it, because the blade really didn't have much space at all. Um, and getting lighting in there and making it stable to where it would connect up to the hilt base well and all those challenges it it, it was it was difficult so um, but i got it all together and it's really sturdy and i'm really happy with the final product and it's gotten like a amazing reception from people which has been really great um, as an artist it's like I don't know, the best thing in the world is having somebody appreciate your art because I really consider the things I build art and not just um, a prop, I guess. So, you know, kind of have a connection with those things. So yeah, uh, thank you. I, I couldn't have been happier with how it turned out. I think my client has it at Axe this weekend and I'm really, really, really hoping to see at least one picture um, but he's kind of a quiet, um, unassuming guy and he doesn't have a cosplay page or anything. And so, um, so yeah, I, I'm hoping for one photo, just one photo online of him with the sword would be great. <laughs> so, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I was just going through the chat here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, TNT. Well, you know, the funny thing about that sword is my kids and I have been laughing about it for just like uh, literally months because it's so ridiculous. It's like this big, huge sword that's all gilded and everything and has chainsaw blade and it's just it's just ridiculous. But yeah, it would it would definitely cause some damage. Um, the sword itself, that's not really a design that I like. I, I like it's kind of it's too fussy. Um, but I have a huge respect for the design after recreating it. Um, I, I noticed that happens a lot with me where I'm like, hey, you know, it's not that, it's it's whatever. And then I build it and try to recreate it. And it's like, okay, I have respect for the design of this thing, even if that style is not really my personal favorite style. Um, it's way too ornate, but it sure is beautiful when it's done. So I have to give it that. Um, but the chainsaw thing, it's just ridiculous. Um, Makes me laugh. 
Ash, uh, love the lighting of the gems on the sword, really showed up the fast. Oh my gosh, I wish you could see it in person though, because that's the one thing that really stinks about lighting stuff is you cannot, you can never get the same look. At least I'm not a good enough photographer or whatever. Maybe a pro photographer can make it happen, or you could probably go in and Photoshop it to approximate what it looks like in person. Um, but man, I wish you could see it in person because um, it's hard to explain, but the way the facets are and the way the lights hit the facets is the you only see the hot spots of the facets when you're looking straight down on it. So when you're in person, um, when you're looking straight down on it, you can see the hot spots of the light, which I wanted there. A lot of times you don't want hot spots, but that particular sword has hot spots on it. That those lights have hot spots in the game, and so they hit those facets just right and when you look down on it you can see those hot spots and the facets like glowing but if you look at it at any angle you don't see it at all you just see the the light like resonate from it and it's it's it almost feels magical it's so cool and i, I wish that i could show people in person how cool it looks because it's almost like a magic trick and the other cool thing is because um those lights fire, they're inset to the sides and they fire into the cavity. You can't see any inner workings at all. So if you hold the sword up and there's like a bright light, you can see through both gems and there's nothing inside there. It, it, it seriously, it's almost like magic and it, it just makes me so excited. I wish people could see it in person. So really hard to convey um, over photos and videos. But yeah, the lighting on that, uh, I was really afraid of the lighting on that. And it was kind of uh, one of the things I put off the longest, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Oh, procrastination prop, see you later. Sorry you couldn't, couldn't stay. Um, at procrastinate. Let me just say goodbye. See ya. Kaylin Silver for, I'm going to call you Silver Surfer. I it just, for whatever reason, I just want to say Silver Surfer. Uh, Kaylin, yeah, that, I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that you see the kind of work that I do and a lot of other people do, and you probably do, um, as art in and of itself and not just, uh, you know, not just a thing, I guess. Um, and no, I did not use, um, I didn't use LED strips. So, and the reason why, okay, I'm gonna try to show you what I used. I'm hoping that my browser window is gonna work. Hey, look at that, it does work. Uh, actually, I'm going to have to look for it. Can you guys still hear me okay? I'm going to switch back. Because I have to go into my account and find the, be the easier way to find it. Okay, so let me find it first. I would have liked to use the LED strips because the lights are a lot brighter. Um, but the problem with those is uh, is power. And that sword, there was no place to put power other than in the handle. And the, or the size of the handle was only like, I had like an inch and a quarter, an inch and a quarter to work with. And you know, you can run LED strips off of um, different types of voltage, like the, the round kind of cylindrical ones, um, that they use for RC cars. And I looked into those, but even those were still too big and a nine volt, since it's kind of squared off, it was still too big. It wouldn't fit within the handle. And I kind of struggled with that for a while until I saw my buddy, Will Morgan, uh, WM Armory. He also streams and is an awesome builder. Um, he was working on a space gun and he used fairy lights, which I've used fairy lights before, 
Um, the uh, the lighting inside my Calhoun armor. Uh, actually, I have it right here. So these lights here. Um, These lights here are actually have fairy, fairy lights embedded into them. I don't think I have it hooked up or I turn it on. Um, it's not hooked up, but so these have fairy lights in them. So I've used fairy lights before on different things. Um, they're not quite as bright, but if you, um, if you can double them up, then that helps a lot. And so Will used the fairy lights and I didn't know these existed until I was watching his stream and saw this. Um, okay, let me switch back here. Browser. Yay, it worked. So these particular ones run off of, um, I guess you call them um, watch batteries. So and they're they're tiny they're you know they're just the, the the case part here is just a little bit this case part it's just a little bit thicker than the watch battery itself and i was able to stack two of those together i just glued i glued two two of those together so there's two full strings there's 30 lights all together in that sword, even though it's only four gems. So, and they worked really well. Um, they work good in, you know, in anything but sunlight. Uh, they look great indoors, especially. So I was really happy. I was a little worried. I was a little worried at first that they would, um, they wouldn't be bright enough. Uh, but since there's essentially eight LEDs in each, the cavity um, it was plenty bright so and almost all LEDs no matter what you have unless they're super high power and you have a huge huge supply are gonna wash out in um, in sunlight and that's why when I do mine I always make sure that the color of the light is also part of um, like the backing of it or the the covering of it like this is the piece for my Calhoun rifle and the lights are red, right? But this window is done with red acrylic as well. So that even if the light's being washed out, you still have the correct color in there. And the same thing applied for the lights on the sword. The gems were pink, the lights were pink. Whether it's lit up or not, you still see pink. So, and I learned that one the hard way with the Loki sword because I had the white, the white, or the, uh, which I have right here on my wall. So this egg piece, whatever you want to call it, um, when I originally made this, we took it to the con, but this was white, right? And they had blue lights in there. Well, everywhere outside, the, the blue lights got completely blown out and it looked like a white a white uh, orb in there instead of, instead of blue. So I went back and actually uh, painted this with an acrylic wash so that it's blue all the time. And then I don't, I haven't, used this in a while so I don't know if these batteries are still good but eh, batteries are pretty dead <laughs> it's barely glowing they haven't been changed in a while so oh sorry about that yeah so anyway I always I ever since then I always try to make sure I match um, whatever I'm backlighting with the color of the lights that way you don't have to worry about that Okay, let's see. What else we got going on in the chat here? Hey, Yukari, how you doing? <laughs> and Kaylin got you. I'll just call you Kaylin. Ooh, you're building the Carnifex, huh? D Creations, that's really cool. Oh, hey, D Creations, I'm glad to hear that um, 
Q&A with Bill worked well. Okay, so you know what? I um, successfully talked my way through through uh, this thing getting. It's 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 probably done because it's it feels solid. I think it's cured all the way. And it's not hot anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and demold it. One part molds are real easy because you just pull it out. So, and it it looks really good. There's no voids or anything. I always get one little bubble right there in the corner of his eye. It's kind of a uh, <laughs> kind of like sleepy eye, you know. So I always just pop that out of there. And that's it. Everything else looks good. Ah, there's one little bubble right there too. Okay. There you have it. So, just like the Furiosa bu buckle. Oh, hey, um, let's see. How many viewers do we have right now? 13 viewers. If you want to enter to win this Furiosa buckle, which I'm going to clean up and polish as well, um, hit exclamation email and email me that you want to enter. Just put giveaway in the subject. And in a little bit, I'm going to pick a winner from the chat. You got to be here to win, though. So um, just to say thanks for you guys for showing up. So I'm going to grab my steel wool. It's in the shop. And then I'm going to polish this up, and you'll get to see an idea of what uh, what it looks like once it's polished up, the cold cast. So this is just um, quadruple aught, uh, super fine steel wool. I like the super fine the most. It seems to um, it seems to buff the best without um, leaving too much little kind of hard to explain. Um, it just buffs better. <laughs> I'm not sure what I was trying to explain there. All right, can you see? Let's see, I just did this little section right here. All right, can you see the difference? Of that one little section of his cheek right there. So shiny. I'm going to do the eyes. Yay, Jackie Craft still here. Yeah, uh, so basically, I mean, that's the whole thing with the with the cold casting, right? Um, and you can just see the difference. See where I've done the eyes? It just, it just, it makes it metal. I mean, it's, it's a metal coating. It's a metal veneer, basically. Now, you do have to be careful because you can go too much and rub that thin veneer off so and I've done that many times but that's one of the reasons why I like to have the gray um, because if you do that a little bit with the gray you really can't tell that it's been done and again it's Mad Max world so everything's kind of just beat up anyway and all that so a little bit of spots here and there where it's been rubbed off actually looks kind of cool and fits the world so 
So just continue to rub this like you're sanding it, kind of. And it magically turns to shiny metal. Yeah, sorry, you're bu it's buffing, not sanding. Yeah. Yep. Definitely it's buffing. Because if you're sanding, then you're like peeling a layer off, and that's not what you want to do. Get in there in the nose a little bit. It's amazing how much of my streams are just me buffing or um, <laughs> sanding things. You know, that's one thing people ask all the time, and, I, and I, I say the same thing all the time, you know? It's like, how do you get your stuff looking so clean and smooth? It's like, I sand the crap out of it. Bill Doran, or Duran, over at Punish Props, my buddy Bill, I sand so much he makes fun of me. <laughs> so. He's like, I would never say that much. I'm like, I know. It's my thing, though. All right, this one's almost done, I think. Now, there's another way you can make it even shinier, and I'm not going to do it on camera uh, since my, uh, my shop microphone's not working right. But if you take... A Dremel with a buffer pad on it and use rubbing compound, automotive rubbing compound that they use to restore paint job and lightly buff it with that and the rubbing compound, it'll make this even glossier. And that's what I do for mine to get them to look really good. So this piece that I'm doing, and this is the actual skull that's gonna go on the, the giveaway piece. And after I'm done with drawing the giveaway, I'm gonna make the rest of the pieces um, cause I thought it'd be fun to live stream the making of it. Um, and not just, Hey, here's your thing. Um, congratulations. So, so there we go. Looks pretty good. I'll blow it off with, uh, my air compressor, which is out in the shop, but you can see the difference. So here's, here's the Furiosa buckle that I'm giving away to all, to one of you lucky chat members. And Here's, and this is unbuffed, this is uncleaned up. You can see all the little remnants I gotta, it needs to be sanded off the back and that stuff will fall off. And then the Joe um, skull, and you can see the difference between polished, shiny, and unpolished, shiny but dull. Pretty cool, huh? All right, that's that. So. I have the five other or four other pieces to make for this and assemble it. Um, I do all the buffing before I assemble.